one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Delusions of Grandeur, and I'm your host, David Stregi, and here I have in here in the room with me Boris from Dark Zone Thirteen. Uh, welcome. Uh, hello, David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure as always. So uh, we had kind of a week off, uh, is, uh, sort of because of technical difficulties, but uh, we're back on to talk uh, some more about uh, uh, the uh, uh, the last feature length film that John. Uh, Bowker actually did. Now he did some short films with some anthologies in between or or after, but uh, this is his actually last feature length uh, of, of film. And uh, from what I understand, you ha you actually have three different copies of this film, correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, I have uh, this DVD, the Tempe Entertainment one. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Correct. Uh, then uh, here is another DVD. I think that was the UK edition, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Correct. So they are similar yet different. And one seems to be, of, uh, one uh, seems to be a little bit more sharper. I I, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, and. Uh, I also have the Blu-ray edition, which uh, came out a little later, if I remember correctly. Yes, it so, did. So, yeah, uh, that's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, Thank you. apparently this film was uh, filmed in 2009, um, and... Uh, it, it, now, John Barker's uh, pr production company is Pipe Dreams Entertainment, correct? Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, but it was originally distributed by Tempe Entertainment, which is uh, um, a distribution company uh, controlled by J uh, um, um, J. R. Bookwalter. J.R. Bookwalter, which um, if anyone has uh, uh, wants to know anything about uh, uh, Mr. J.R. Uh, Bookwalter, go ahead to Spotify and check out Inside Movies Galore uh, interview with J.R. Uh, uh, Bookwalter um, that, uh, w that I did with him um, around the campaign of his Robot Ninja Blu-ray um, campaign. So... Uh, um, you should be able to find that out on Spotify. Uh, Fi, uh, but in any case, uh, let us uh, let us go on about this uh, particular uh, film. So, in this particular f uh, film, it is kind of a war movie in a sense. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, I would actually say it's. Uh... Uh, significantly different from the other John Bowker movies uh, we have discussed before. Well, <laughs> it is, uh, so it is, we have three soldiers. Uh, yeah, who end up being in a post-apocalyptic world that evidently we are. Um, the, the film starts after the war has actually started um in fact it seems to be more or less towards the end of this war uh so to speak because it seems like these three soldiers um are uh, find themselves in totally different areas and come across each other um just by happenstance it's like they it's like Whatever platoon they were part of, uh, they were separated from, correct? Uh, well, if I understood correctly, well, uh, I might be wrong. As you know, I somewhat uh, struggle with my listening skills uh, for <laughs> foreign languages. But as far as I understood, their platoon was ambushed, and uh, those three were the only ones that survived. Uh, yeah, so evidently they were separated from their platoon by being ambushed by um, apparently the living dead. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we don't see much, uh, much of that of that up until the point that they, uh, well, uh, these are the three soldiers, Sergeant Butler, uh, Lieutenant Roberts, and Private Dillon. Uh, uh, the, yeah. These are the three soldiers that end up finding each other in this uh, abandoned wasteland uh, uh, land where uh, they come across a house that uh, that seems to be abandoned, and suddenly three women show up uh, unannounced, and uh, apparently the uh, uh, these are some other characters. <laughs> uh, yeah, three mysterious women. <laughs> so, uh, what what do you think about uh, what uh, what what were your first impressions of this film? Um, as a whole well uh, this is not the first time i watched this movie as you know i am a big john bowker fan but uh, uh, i would have to say this movie is uh, quite different from other john bowker movies we have discussed before it is uh, very war themed and uh, in spite of it uh, being uh, well uh, still kind of set in a fantasy world because these soldiers are fighting zombies. I would say, especially at the beginning, in this scene with uh, Private Dillon finding uh, this soldier uh, stuck on a tree. Uh, <laughs> I would say it's... Uh, especially in that scene, this movie did a very good job at portraying uh, the atmosphere of uh, a more realistic war, a more human one, this uh, uh, this gloomy and bitter war atmosphere, which uh, I must say I normally don't watch that sort of movies, but uh, this is John Bowker, so of course I had to watch it. <laughs> and uh, I actually have to say it uh, did a pretty good job at... Uh, being what uh, it, it uh, was meant to be. Like like I said, it did a great job at portraying the war atmosphere. And, uh, before uh, we go oh, on, and before we go on about my uh, personal thoughts on this uh, film, we uh, spoiler alert, folks. Cause we're oh, yeah. <laughs> spoil the crap out of this movie. Um, uh, so... Um, those of you who have not seen this film uh, before, go ahead and go see it, uh, be, and then use this um, discussion as maybe possibly a companion piece to that uh, uh, film, because uh, we're probably going to like the film probably a little bit more than the general public will. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. I, 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 I'll say this because uh, IMDb gives it a 1.7 star rating on a 10 point scale. Well, uh, I noticed that, and I must say, I was uh, surprised. Well, okay, it maybe did have some uh, uh, unrealistic uh, CG effects and some things like that, and uh, the weapon. The CGI effects were actually pretty good for for what they were. They actually seemed like, and this is this is from seeing this movie only once because I I'd collected this movie myself. Uh, I just never put it in to watch uh, until today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, uh, but seeing it uh, today, I actually thought the effects on it were actually pretty good for its time. I mean, uh, the 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 '90s to to, uh, to early uh, to late 2000s, those were the beginnings of uh, CGI and what oh you know. Um, for me, the weapons were actually pretty cool. Um, well, yeah, they were cool. The only thing is, which I must say I didn't immediately notice on my own, but uh, I read some other people mentioning it. Uh, those weapons were actually uh, we weapons from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or they picked them up from Toys R Us or something like that. 
Uh, which I, I think they were replicas, <laughs> toy replicas of it, Star Wars weapons. I think it, it's an independent film, so. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's why I still liked it in spite of those things that some people apparently pointed out as flaws. But you know me, I always like these sort of movies. You're supposed to have an open mind about these uh, films and have an imagination. And once, uh, yeah. once you go there, once, uh, once you have that imagination in, in effect, uh, you can believe whatever you want to believe, you know? I mean... <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like they're taking you on a journey, and you're supposed to take yourself there. And to uh, to me, okay, yeah, I, I noticed that the uh, the uniforms that they had, okay, maybe they went and picked them up at the local navy store or something like that. I'm not really caring about that. I'm watching the movie, okay. So well, same here. I was basically just. Uh, Mentioning some things that I saw some other people point out as flaws, as I and I was trying to say that I still liked the <laughs> movie in spite of those things that apparently bothered some other people. <laughs> I guess my point is that there were uh, there was a lot of negativity uh, said about this film. I don't think it's ultimately um, as bad as people think it is. Uh, I agree. Like I said, uh, I think it uh, did a pretty good job at portraying the war atmosphere. Like when I was watching it for the first time, this uh, these first few scenes really gave me that uh, bitter war feeling. So well, that's it's, uh, well, it, well, it's definitely got uh, a serious tone about it uh, for, uh, for sure. Um, it's it's got you wrapped in that mo uh, a moment. That, uh, uh, well, um, like I said, I, this was my first time watching this film, and I'm not really into. Uh, uh, for me personally, I'm not really into Navy SEAL movies. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you this, <laughs> this one, because like, for some reason, even though I know. Okay, I know that Navy SEALs uh, have fought for our country or fought for this country, and uh, okay, more power to uh, to them. But uh, but Navy SEALs, at least the nitty gritty, uh, gritty uh, stuff. I don't know. I just don't get into those kind of films as much as some people do. Uh, and, I agree. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, um, these guys, uh, uh, these guys, uh, okay, so um, apparently somewhere during the film we get, uh, uh, we get why the this war has gone, uh, uh, gone on, because uh, uh, apparently um, it started off as a supernatural event, correct? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it it is, it, it was said at one point that it all started with, some kids which later we find out uh, who they were or who one of them was uh, they were uh, messing around with the supernatural with ouija boards and stuff like that and uh, something went wrong and they summoned something uh, evil into this world which uh, uh, led to uh, dead bodies being resurrected as uh, soldiers and uh, fighting a war against living humans. Correct. And what do you think about that idea? Uh, do, uh, do you think that is a very viable idea? Do you think it's very possible that uh, if you fuck with a Ouija board like th these kids did, uh, do you think that they could, in fact, bring back the dead? <laughs> Well, in all honesty, no, I don't think any such thing could happen, especially because I actually own a Ouija board and uh, nothing has ever happened to me because of it. Actually, it never even worked for me. So, <laughs> oh, so you're saying you actually tried to bring back an evil entity? Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, I actually have a Ouija board myself, and th though I've had some strange things happen, uh, I don't, I don't fully think that uh, that 
this is all entirely plausible, but is it possible? Um, I, th I think all things are possible. Um, uh, and along those lines, um, evidently five kids um, were, uh, were uh, part of this um, Ouija board incident. And one of them happened to be one of the women that uh, evidently um, owned the house or her parents owned the house and her parents were killed. Um, uh, yeah, her parents, her parents and her baby sister, I think. Correct. Now, um, what do you think about the three women characters uh, uh, that are portrayed in this film? Uh, do you think that these are very strong women? Well, I would, uh, I would say, well, at least uh, two of them are uh, strong. Uh, Heather and Stacy. Jill uh, was uh, maybe a little more dependent on the other two, which probably somewhat had to do with the shock of what happened to her family. And uh, it uh, obviously left her traumatized as she... Uh, and she became mute after what happened. Okay. Mm. And uh, um, what do you think about the uh, constant uh, 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 back and forth between Sergeant Butler and St and Stacy? <laughs> well, it was uh, actually uh, very interesting, uh, like usually in movies when a man and a woman dislike each other, it's uh, often portrayed as some sexual tension and in the end it turns, act, it turns out they actually liked each other, but not in this case. <laughs> uh, yeah, like there was a legitimate hatred between Stacy and Sergeant Butler and uh, uh, actually after seeing... It first started by him eating her pot roast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... They, uh, the soldiers had um, ended up, because wh what they were trying to do is uh, they were trying to uh, end up at a rendezvous point that, uh, that evidently uh, their platoon had put in state um, once everything was do uh, done. Uh, as, uh, as all plans go uh, this was a backup point uh, of where to be rescued from and um they end up going to this house to and they scourge for food and they do not realize that uh, there is a troop of women that, uh, that have been squatting in this house for many months now um uh, correct. yeah yeah and i must say i was wondering when they entered the, the house, those three women were hidden in that uh, basement or whatever it was. Uh, and it, uh, uh, it kind of left me wondering why they hadn't showed up earlier. Like those three men entered the house and they were hidden all the time. And then they suddenly came out like... Uh, I was kind of wondering uh, why exactly were they hiding in the first place. Uh, well, um, they were probably hiding because they didn't know who uh, who it was that was coming into the uh, to the house. What was it? The dead? What, uh, was it? Uh, you know, uh, the living? Uh, was it someone they could trust? You know. Um. So, mm. uh, uh, to me, um, they probably hid just for the fact that, you know, they uh, that uh, they they didn't know it was the unknown uh, that was coming into the home in which they had been living. So, it, Ooh, it could be very, very possible that uh, they could have been um, just waiting to see uh, what was in store for them. And when they f uh, figured out it was uh, was living pe uh, 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 living people, but they were eating their food, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they uh, that's when they uh, came out from from where they were hiding. So. Um, and uh, I did uh, kind of like the the tale uh, that they uh, they uh, they spun 
um, about why the war uh, what it was because it, it was more or less a nonchalant conversation about what uh, Heather actually thought of uh, 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 of the situation and what she's heard because uh, evidently her husband wa uh, was part of the military. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think he was killed, if I understood correctly. Correct, and uh, she ended up um, coming across Stacy. Uh, evidently, she was all banged up when she first met her. And yeah. So, um, so on and so forth. So... Uh, what did you think about the turn of events after uh, after this? That Stacy was actually uh, working for the Living Dead, or well, the winning side, as she said it. <laughs> yeah, after watching the movie uh, more than once, uh, I actually realized uh, uh, that uh, the turn of events regarding Stacy was foreshadowed throughout the entire movie. Like, Almost whenever she appeared, she had that sinister smirk on her face for reasons we didn't get to find out un uh, uh, until well, yeah. the end. She seemed to ha a have some uh, some very honest-to-God horror, uh, um, uh, uh, horror moments where she, uh, she, like she was talking to uh, the young private about uh, horror movies. Uh, and yeah. sexual stuff, you know, um, it was like she was tr uh, trying to, um, what is it, um, scare him. Uh, yeah, well, funnily enough, that scene uh, somewhat reminded me, if you remember, in uh, Joe Sherlock's uh, Odd Doggies, uh, when uh, Joe Sherlock's and John Bowker's character are having a discussion while eating and uh, Joe mentions some gross stuff from a horror movie and uh, John gets grossed out and throws his snack aside. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> this scene in Platoon of the Dead when Stacy started to elaborate all these horrible things about zombies to Private Dylan, it reminded me of that scene from Odd Noggins. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Uh, uh, she definitely, uh, um, she definitely made sure that his appetite was uh, no longer there. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> uh, but uh, in any case, so um, as the film goes on, um, uh, apparently. Uh, there is an intruder, uh, a, a zombie intruder, inside the home um, while they were th uh, there, and they all went and hid uh, to uh, to the one uh, one side of the house, to the another side of the house, and uh, of course, uh, um, Heather and uh, Sergeant Butler uh, end up. Go uh, uh, go uh, uh, he tries to hide her in a shower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it uh, felt pretty strange because the curtain of the shower was translucent. Like, if anyone came into the bathroom, they would see her right away. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave her, what What was it, some shampoo to spr uh, spray, uh, spray in the zombie's eyes or whatever? Uh, somewhat like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, but she doesn't stay put. Um, she goes, gets a gun, and then she's stunned uh, b uh, by a gun in the zombie's hand, so, which, uh, which is strange. You'd think that zombies wouldn't carry guns, uh, uh, but these ones do. Well, yeah, it is said that these zombies are getting smarter and smarter, so... Which is... Uh, or normal zombie, uh, t to be honest. I, I don't know a whole lot of zombies that carry guns. <laughs> Indeed, I don't remember seeing that in other movies either. <laughs> Not even in The Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, you, I don't know. I, I just... Zombies, when, uh, 
most most of the time are portrayed as these dumb things that seem to, uh, seem to walk after you or uh, sometimes it's not that uh, they're dumb it's just that people are dumb and they uh, they run from these things and uh, <laughs> they <laughs> Uh, they they don't realize that uh, these zombies are kind of like uh, the Michael Myers of zombie films because <laughs> you ever uh, you ever see a, a Halloween film? Uh, I saw some of them uh, a long time ago. I don't actually remember them very well as I uh, usually watch more. Uh, Michael Myers would walk. Uh, he would simply walk. And no, no matter who would run, he'd catch up to them. Uh, <laughs> kind of like the, yeah. the tortoise and the hare. Uh, the tortoise is the slowest animal, and yet he will probably win the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I... To me, guns and zombies, that's a little different uh, to, uh, to me. Um, normally, zombies are not intelligent uh, beings that are able to carry gu uh, 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 guns uh, 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 or anything like that, but these do. And uh, they seem to be able to walk around like regular human beings in, in, in here. Mm, yeah, and... Uh... They also do seem intelligent, as uh, apparently they also have uh, uh, platoons. Uh, they also have their bosses, apparently, and things like that. Uh, they are organized, so... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. They... we see a group of them at, at the end, um, uh, or towards the end, as... Uh, as the group uh, what whatever's left of the group is uh trying to escape uh which uh um apparently it's down to uh private dylan um at the end uh, with jill and jill uh, 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 somewhat i don't know what how i don't know what happened uh, uh, to her did you realize what happened to her uh it seemed like did she get shot? Uh, yeah, she got uh, shot by uh, these uh, last zombies that were chasing them. Uh, okay. Yeah, they were shooting. Sure at, uh, uh, she got shot or uh, maybe she was starting to turn into a zombie because maybe she was a zombie or I, I don't know because she was uh, doing some convulsive moving uh, towards the end. Um, but I guess she did get shot and killed. Yeah, yeah, I think she did. <laughs> but ultimately, uh, Dylan, uh, Private Dylan, gets rescued by a rescue soldier who ended up having a minivan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, we see him drive off into the sunset, uh, uh, talking about uh, talking about how he'll uh, how he'll. Always keep running and always keep uh, keep go uh, going and I'll always remember this tale, uh, uh, like he was telling it to begin with. Which uh, I don't think we really got uh, uh, the private talking like that in the beginning. So I wonder how it became his story. You know. Well, well, as far as we uh, got to find out about private deal of the. On his wedding day, his uh, uh, bride was turned in, turned into a zombie, and uh, another soldier killed her right in front of him, and that made him want to join the army in order in order to stop the zombies. Uh, okay, so that was his wife. Okay, I was trying to figure out who uh, who that uh, uh, that was, although that little. That part was a little funny to uh, me, uh, me because uh, he was like, honey. And then uh, the voice started getting lower, honey. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I was, uh, the only thing that confused me about that flashback scene was uh, why Dylan wasn't wearing a suit if that was his wedding day. as The wife was wearing a wedding dress, but... Uh, 
he was wearing something random. And yeah, he addressed her as honey and said the wedding guests were waiting. And then uh, the bride turned to him and uh, spoke in a different voice, uh, presumably a zombie voice. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that made him realize it was no longer uh, the woman he knew. Dylan was also uh, uh, the man who had a fever dream of uh, him and Stacy getting it on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, she tur Stacy turned into a zombie in that scene, which uh, in that nightmare, which is interesting because if you don't know what's happening next, uh, you may think it's uh, just a nightmare, but then it, tur it turns out to be foreshadowing of uh, uh, who Stacy really was. <laughs> so, was Stacy in fact a zombie? Well, not quite a zombie, but she was. Uh, uh, she worked for the zombies. Uh, as far as I understood, she became a vessel for some superior evil entity that was commanding the zombies. Uh, <laughs> Which uh, evidently w was in charge of this platoon. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, in any case, what did you think about um, uh, uh, the character of um, Lieutenant Roberts? Well, I actually think uh, he is my favorite one of the three soldiers. And uh, I think uh, they shouldn't have killed him in the end. Well, uh, I think it could have worked uh, even if he had survived. But... Uh, well, he was apparently reunited with his wife and daughter, who had apparently perished, as we get to find out when he hears voice or remembered uh, uh, his wife and daughter when he looks at the doll his daughter had made for him. And why I like him as a character is because... Uh, he is uh, uh, both strong and uh, fair. Like he will, uh, uh, he will usually stand up for Private Dillon, who apparently doesn't have the inner strength to stand up for himself. So that's well, I where uh, I didn't realize his hair was that long at uh, first until he took it out of his uh, army hat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, his uh, his hair was long, and it was pointed out that it was uh, apparently unusual for a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I would say so, uh, uh, so but uh, in any case, um, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to... Uh, uh, I actually thought uh, some of the music was actually intriguing. Um uh, behind, uh, especially in the end, it, it felt like more of a, uh, uh, like a bigger film than it was, uh, uh, than it was budgeted to be. <laughs> Indeed, the, the music is uh, pretty much uh, energetic, like uh, it, uh, it really does a good job at uh, creating the atmosphere that uh, was needed for this movie. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, I liked uh, the music in the ending credits. Uh, it's uh, on the music uh, seems to be by Steve Steve Sessions. Oh yeah, he. Uh, as far as I've seen, he, he has been involved in uh, quite several John Bowker's and Joe Sherlock's movies uh, by contributing music. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can see that. Uh, uh, that. Um, in fact, uh, he did some of the music behind Dark Zone 13. So, oh, oh, he did, yeah. Um, uh, which uh, I, I thought was interesting. So, um but uh, yeah, um, let's talk about uh, favorite scenes now. Whew. Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, uh, like I said before, one of the most uh, impacting scenes, uh, although it was uh, 
uh, quite difficult to watch was uh, the beginning when the private Dylan came across uh, this soldier stuck on a tree and he tried to release him and it only led to the uh, other soldiers screaming in agony and eventually uh, begging to be put out of his misery. That was uh, very, I would say, painful to watch, but that means it was pretty well done. But now uh, the scene I enjoyed the most, well, uh, maybe it would be when Sergeant Butler gets his comeuppance for everything he did, although it was uh, uh, also uh, not so good because other people who were innocent uh, also died in that scene. But yeah, I have to admit I liked uh, what happened to Sergeant Butler after everything he did in the movie previously. Okay. Um, I guess uh, if I had to say a, say a favorite scene, um, my favorite scene would probably be, be the, uh, that uh, nightmare that uh, um, uh, <laughs> private, private, Dylan. private Dylan had. I don't know why. Um, and uh, I guess... Uh, yeah, um, and uh, when they were revealing the uh, the story behind the um, uh, what happened, um, I, I, I liked that scene because that was a a little bit of a comfortable scene, uh, scene uh, thereabouts. Uh, so, uh, so I liked hearing about about what uh, how the war came to be it being and uh, uh, whatnot. So um, I. I thought the acting was actually relatively decent for an independent film. You have to right. just understand that, you know, you have to kind of have an imagination for this uh, movie. And I think it was well done for its time. I mean, I, I, I personally don't think it deserves all the negativity that IMDb. I don't think so, I don't think so either. I, I like this movie. <laughs> I I th I actually thought this was up there with um uh, with uh, Dreamwalkers um um because uh, I really liked Dreamwalkers uh, so did I John Bowker's uh, uh, movies uh, um but I actually think that this movie is actually filmed better that, uh, than that uh, that film. Well, yeah, it was uh, probably because it's uh, much newer and uh, John Bowker probably had uh, a lot more experience by the time Platoon of the Dead was made. So, yeah, that's why it looks better visually. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to say about this film before uh, we uh, conclude our discussion? Uh, well, yes, actually. Did you notice that uh, the premise of this movie is uh, very similar to the uh, short uh, called the Tainted Blood in Beneath a Dead Moon that we discussed previously? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, yeah, it, like in this movie we had uh, a war between humans and zombies and at the beginning it was said that uh, all humans had to unite and fight not each other, but a threat bigger than them all. In this case, zombies and in Tainted Blood, it was vampires, but the premise was uh, practically the same, with humans uniting in a war against something more threatening than them. And uh, it... Uh, I hate... It, to do this, but continue to, uh, talking. I had to go take care of so, uh, something really quick, so give me one s uh, second, ladies and gentlemen. Continue to, uh, uh, talking, Boris, for a, mo a moment. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, uh, I noticed the similarity between the uh, Platoon of the Dead and uh, Tainted Blood, uh, a short from Joe Sherlock's anthology Beneath a Dead Moon. And it's uh, interesting, uh, the similarity is probably not uh, coincidental because uh, both Platoon of the Dead and Tainted Blood were written by John Bowker. And uh, both movies uh, uh, deal with uh, 
uh, aside of the things I mentioned, uh, they deal with uh, the topic of betrayal, of uh, humans uh, taking the enemy's side because they realize the enemy is too strong and they can only survive by taking their side, even if that makes them uh, villains in the eyes of other humans. Uh, so in Tainted Blood, we had uh, uh, Tony Dragon's character, Melinda, who eventually turned out to be a vampire. She uh, took uh, the side of vampires because she realized it was uh, uh, a way to survive and she wanted to turn her husband into a vampire as well, not knowing that uh, he hated her for taking the enemy's side and he uh, tricked her into biting him and uh, killing herself with uh, the poison she sucked out of him. So, uh, like I said, in that movie, uh, there was also the topic of uh, a human uh, betraying their own kind in order to survive. Just like in Platoon of the Dead, we had uh, Stacy who, uh, who did the same thing. That's a very good uh, point that you brought up. So, uh, um, sorry about that, folks. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, it, unless you have anything else that uh, you would like to bring up, I do believe that's all the time we have for today, folks. Um, but this definitely go and check this film out. Um, as, oh, it did. As... Um, um, I mean, I really liked, I really liked the, st the story behind the, the film. Um, I know that, uh, uh, I normally don't like films that have to do with, uh, our, our army or anything. Uh, well, it's not that I don't like films that have to do with a war. I guess, I guess I get into uh, uh, things that have to do with the Revolutionary War or like World War II or, or something of that effect. But I don't know. Recent, uh, recent wa uh, wars are not as interesting as historical wars. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I admit I agree. I normally uh, don't uh, watch movies about war very much. Uh, <laughs> Unless there are some kind of fantasy or sci-fi wars, like, <laughs> well, like this movie, for example. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that it has kind of a supernatural element to it. So, uh, in yeah, any it case... is. <laughs> well, it's a John Bowker movie, after all, of course, it has to do with the supernatural. <laughs> and like you uh, said, it's on several di uh, different um, um, uh, DVDs, and it's on Blu-ray as well. So, uh, so um, definitely go and check out the film if you get a, a chance. Did you want to show uh, them real quick? Uh, yeah, I personally recommend if you can... Uh, find this copy, it may be a little difficult now because Tempe Entertainment was uh, shut down a while ago, but if you can somewhere find uh, this copy, this is the one I recommend because it uh, has some extras and things like that. And yeah, uh, the Blu-ray is probably very good, although unfortunately I haven't been able to watch it because I don't own the Blu-ray player, but I bought this Blu-ray for my collection of John Bowker's movies. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> if you can find uh, either the Blu-ray or this DVD, it would be great. Well, this DVD is uh, not bad either, but it doesn't have the extras, which is why I personally prefer this one. Which I believe is the copy that I actually have too myself. So I just haven't unearthed it because uh, I'm I'm looking for other films at this moment. So <laughs> in my oh. piles of movies that I uh, that I ha have. So yeah, I, you do have a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of envy you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, I appreciate you being able to come on about this uh, film. Um, I, I think it's okay for its time. I, I mean, I, definitely. Again, this was this was 
in the somewhat later stages of the beginnings of CGI. So I think that the CGI of the weaponry uh, was <coughs> was actually a lot better than some of the films that I have seen in the pa uh, past. Um, oh, that's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, they may have been Star Wars. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not yeah. Sure. At first, I uh, I didn't even notice, but some other people pointed it out, and <laughs> then when I watched it again, then I did notice, and I personally it's thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> I suppose it's better than having Nerf guns. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in any case, uh, appreciate the time. Uh, spent listening to our ramblings of this uh, film. Definitely go out and uh, enjoy this film for your own self if you have not. Uh, yeah, it's a shot on video film, but it's got some decent special effects, and I don't think the acting is as bad as they say. Now, yes, I, I agree. they probably did, did go to your local navy army store uh, picked up uh, whatever but you know what in an independent film you got to do what you got to do uh, on the budget that you have and yeah to enjoy this film you kind of have to have an imagination yeah kind of have to be able to be open to where this story is taking you and st uh, stop noticing the uh, the small stuff and see the bigger picture you know what i'm saying yeah. Indeed, but yeah, in this one, I would say the acting wasn't bad at all, especially at Tom Stedham, the actor who played Sergeant Butler. I think he did the best job as an actor in this movie, although I didn't like his character, but he wasn't supposed to be liked. <laughs> no, he definitely was not. I thought he would definitely play a, 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 a definite badass in, in here uh, for sure <laughs> uh, yeah like uh, throughout the movie uh, you uh, get the impression that he is kind of an asshole but you kind of hope he is going to turn out to be not as bad as he seemed but then when he tried to rape Jill that's where he brings himself beyond redemption <laughs> most definitely well uh, again, I appreciate you being able to come on with me about this uh, uh, film. I'm glad we got uh, got to it. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> definitely. Um, so uh, I was thinking about going on about a newer film that just recently came out. If you'll come on with me about it, it's called Bad CGI Sharks. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard about that one, but sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I figured uh, and since it was relatively newer, it, it came out last year, um, but it came out recently on DVD. So um, oh. um, I will get you a copy and we'll go from there. So um, next oh, thank week, you. ladies and gentlemen, we'll be go uh, going uh, on about my... I, uh, bad CGI uh, sharks, which is put together by Mom. Uh, it, it's hard to pronounce. Uh, Let me look uh, look it up really quick. Uh, quick. Uh, let's see. Bad CGI. Okay. Yeah, it's a 2019. Uh, uh, the team is called Majama. But uh, the reason why it's Majama is because it, uh, the, 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 the three actors that play in here are Matthew Ellsworth, Jason Ellsworth, and Matteo Malinari. Uh, so the first two letters of each of their na names makes up this, gr uh, this, this group. Um, oh. and, um, Evidently, two estranged brothers are brought back together when a script they're writing comes to life and sends a poorly rendered digital shark to hunt them down in this meta take on the shark exploitation genre. Oh, wow. <laughs> that one is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I can make it a double feature and we can do House Shark as well. If oh. you're. Uh, Rod Bunk's movie. 
Yeah. Oh, you, cool. You know uh, it. I, uh, I haven't seen it, but I have heard about it, and I was uh, planning to get it at some point. Uh, well, if, yeah. you're, if you're up for a double feature, uh, be, uh, because technically Ron Bonk's uh, website is selling this uh, uh, th uh, this movie, um, so uh, so I guess there is, there is kind of a connection to. Um, the two he distributed it under uh, a sub rosa cinema uh, uh so pro a house shark a bad cgi shark double feature i'm down for it are you uh, <laughs> <same> here <laughs> all righty man well um i'm i'm going to send both of those to you probably sunday and uh, we'll go on about them and ladies and gentlemen I look forward to a double shark feature ne uh, next week. If we can't do it Monday, we'll do it we uh, next we Wednesday. So stay tuned for some more exciting stuff. Sounds <laughs> good to me. So thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, see you next time. <laughs> Definitely, man.